Okay. Right here, and Pollyon, you were to start out. Okay. Uh, so, what if I told you this was scalp? Many follicles. And are they big follicles or tiny little follicles? Tiny little, not very deep. Yeah, tiny little, not it's very maybe deep. Facial. And so, very sparse lymphocyte infiltrate. Another it's, um, basal layer pigmentation. There is basal layer pigmentation. My guess is that it's a darker skinned child. When you look at the dermis, the collagen bundles are very small, very red, fair number of fibroblasts. So, this is probably kid skin and a kid skin from a darker patient and probably so something that was cut out of scalp because it was a big hairless area. Fat tissue is very up. The, the fatty tissue is high. Yes, it is high. So, you know, which <coughs> could be seen in things like light edema but and other things. What if I told you that this was a triang a distinctly triangular hairless area in the scalp, parietal scalp? So tri triangular alopecia looks histologically um, somewhat like stable alopecia areata where it no longer has the infiltrate or like pattern alopecia with miniaturization of hair follicles, but it tends to be congenital, long-standing, and the hairs are vellus forever, basically. And in this case, this probably was taken out um, as a surgery, perhaps thinking that it was um, a early nevus sebaceous, or knowing that it was triangular alopecia. Um, but it gave us a, a nice big piece to look at. Okay. We're good. That was probably tough because it needs a lot of clinical correlation. <coughs> yes. Okay. Shufan, what do you think? Yep, soft tissue neoplasm. And the nuclei tend to be very wavy. Yeah, so it looks like neurofibroma, sort of diffuse with wavy nuclei, and then it goes deeply into the fat, trapping lipocytes. You have single file rows of lipocytes, almost as you you would get with a DFSP. So what pattern neurofibroma is that that grows into the fat like a DFSP? Yep, I'm hearing a diffuse neurofibroma which is always associated with von Recklinghausen's essentially. So diffuse neurofibroma looks a lot like myxoid DFSP, but stains neural just like an NF and um, is very, very strongly associated <coughs> with loss of heterozygosity in, in neurofibromatosis. So. Pilometric homo, your response was a little slow, <laughs> but good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have lots of shadow cells, right? Lots of shadow or ghost cells and baseloid tumors. And the two others are 
thing. Why couldn't I have gotten the pilot major <laughs> going? Uh, <laughs> theirs were a, a little bit harder, <laughs> but you do get to hit the easy button for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <coughs> okay. So how about this? Um, like a looks kind of like a pyogenic granuloma in that it's distinctly lobular. Um, it's a little different from a pyogenic granuloma in that this is full of eosinophils. The, and the endothelial cells, rather than being fairly normal as they would be in pyogenic granuloma are kind of large and histiocytoid or epithelioid in appearance. So it would be a lobular proliferation of histiocytoid endothelial cells with lots of EOs and some lymphoid hyperplasia. Like ALHE? Like ALHE like and all. this is the end of that spectrum that's histiocytoid hemangioma. So histiocytoid hemangioma <coughs> is a variant of ALHE that is more vessel, less lymph. A little like uh, KIS. With, with uh, a a little bit. similar to Kaposi sarcoma, not as spindled as KS would tend to be in the nodular phase. And you could always do an HHV8 to, to confirm if there were a question. So good, good point. Somewhat of a blue nodule. A little bit. Are, the, are the cells round or are they spindled? Spindled. Spindled. So it's a spindle cell neoplasm. Not quite slammed all the way against the epidermis, but certainly a spindle cell neoplasm mm -hmm. forming a nodule. So, I mean, can you do the slam differential if it's that close? You sure could, especially <laughs> since there's atypia and mitoses in this. In fact, quite a few mitotic figures. So your slam differential would include? Uh, SCC, lyoma, SARC, AFX, and melanoma. And this one stained as a melanoma. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's not slammed up against the epidermis is it's a mess. Which is why it's kind of just a ball. So uh, how about the solitary fibrous tumor? So SFT, solitary fibrous tumor, would tend to be deeper. This is dermally based and very superficial. Yes. SFT tends to be based in the deeper soft tissues. Doesn't break into fascicles. This has almost a trabecular pattern. Okay. Um, SFT tends to be solid with a so-called patternless pattern, and then often staghorn vessels like hemangioparasitoma yes. embedded in it. <coughs> so good question. Well, <laughs> um, lots of pigment at the DJ. We have a lot of, it looks like atypical nests. Um, Yeah, so you have confluence at the junction, irregular nesting, effacement of the reedy pattern, pagetoid scatter, mm -hmm. a fibrotic stroma that pushes the rest down, and within that are large um, nodules of melanocytes, and those are larger than the largest one at the DE junction, so mm -hmm. there's a vertical mm -hmm. growth phase, right? Um, is this melanoma or is that pre-existing nevus? Um, I think pre-existing nevus can have those like fat-like cells or... So it appears to disperse. Yeah, pre-existing It has nice nuclear pseudo-inclusions. Mm -hmm. And in this stain, the elastic fibers are picking up a lot of eosin, so you can see it retains elastic. All of that helps tell you that that's <laughs> just nevus, so you don't want to measure that for your mm -hmm. depth. 
And elastic is often the best way. Uh, most melanomas push elastic out of the way, whereas the elastic is preserved throughout the nevus, so it's a good way of telling what's what when you're getting your depth. <coughs> Looks like a squareless preparation. Uh, so you're saying it's a DST, right? Right. A lot of squamous eddies kind of falling apart. Just Could just be really yeah, irritated. Thing, right? Seb, which is like an acantholytic squame. Yeah, so you pointed out lots and lots of squamous eddies. The older keratin before it became angry is lamellar shredded wheat. Yeah. Favoring Seb. The bottom has a string sign. So, irritated Seb, kind of a wild irritated Seb. So, large or small? Large. Large. <laughs> and then <laughs> tell me about the overlying Maybe epidermis. Acanthotic. Tell me. Three larger tumors that don't efface but rather have acanthosis. Uh, granular cell DF and spits. The granular cell DF and spits. Is this a GCT? No. Is it a spits? No. What's left? DF. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so at scan, that's dermatofibroma because it's a fairly large tumor that produces acanthosis rather than effacement. And then, you know, you can look higher and see that it has a curly Q pattern and multinucleate giant cells and histiocytic cells and stains like a DF, but the overlying acanthosis is a major clue. Would you stain that one? Like first um, first probably first not. Yeah. Probably just call it an H&E. So, I'm not sure if that's a little blister, perhaps, with this processor. Uh, probably artifactual, okay. given the way it Never looks Never mind. There. <coughs> um, so there's an infiltrate of kind of lighter colored cells, a little bit of epidermotropism. So there's definitely some epidermotropism. Um, Tell me about the papillary dermis. A little bit fibrotic. A little so bit fibrotic with lymphs lined up between yeah, that ropey collagen. A little MFE. A little MFE, which is exactly what it is. So epidermotropism, lymph in every hole, <coughs> wiry, papillary dermal collagen, lymphs lined up between that papillary dermal collagen. Nodule melanoma, and melanoma. Yep. yep. So a marble-like red nodule. And in fact, we're going to let's go down to fifty percent. <laughs> 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 That was easy. So a marble-like red nodule, and you can see the little glycogen vacuoles in there of smooth muscle. The only thing that looks like this is an angiolyomyoma. So there's sort of keloidal collagen within it, and little islands or theeks of cells, all uniform or pleomorphic? Mitosis present? Yeah, it certainly could be squamous cell carcinoma. Um, you'd probably <coughs> want to know what the patient had before, so and this kind of melanoma, really yeah, really and, and this is in fact melanoma. Mm -hmm. So another metastatic melanoma. Little Welser can describe the bump. So well circumscribed little bump. 
clefts between fascicles. Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking? What gives you Thank a well circumscribed little bump? The, um, the clefts between the fascicles help too. And also, if you saw the whole thing, it would be like this, sort of vertically oriented, probably on facial skin. Yeah, um, you're in the right ballpark. So with the clefting, PEM. Palisading capsid and neuroma. These tend to have the really pronounced clefts between the between the fascicles. And you know, these are tough cases. You don't know what chapter <coughs> you're coming the case is coming from, but this is the perfect opportunity. Make every mistake you're ever gonna make in this room so you don't make it in another room. In real life, like they're going to have a chapter number on the slide, right? Oh, in real life, yes. In real life and on exams. In fact, the patient comes in with the chapter tattooed on their forehead. Yes. It's great help. It is a tremendous help, yes. They do that at the registration desk. Okay. Let's keep on going. So we see lots of bundles of smooth muscle. And then in the center, sebaceous oh, okay. glands and a duct smooth down below. Smooth muscle hematoma. So it looks kind of like smooth muscle hematoma on either side of hair follicle with very prominent sebaceous ducts or sebaceous glands and then an apocrine kind of duct. Uh, uh, um, Neva sebaceous would tend to be broader and this little thing with all the muscle around it is probably accessory, accessory nipple. Okay. Right. So accessory nipple where you have the smooth muscle, the sebaceous in the center, and the duct running up the middle. Very good. So your stratum corneum, normal basket weave, your epidermis happy or unhappy? Happy. Unhappy, very unhappy, right? So, and judging by the corneum, I would say very acutely unhappy. Full thickness unhappy, very acutely. Mm -hmm. So, what are you thinking? And death far out of proportion to lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. So, I think I heard it. E M T E N. Differential. So, erythema multiforme, toxic epidermal necrolysis. Um, everyone today needs to review the images of a patient who came in over the weekend mm -hmm. who was a young man diagnosed with lymphoma recently and now has horrible crusting around his eyes, his lips, and widespread erosion on skin. He has super basilar acanthalysis as well as. Um, eosinophils throughout the epidermis forming um, boy and clefts and it's almost certainly PNP. We got his panel back. He was the one I was talking to you about. It's yeah. negative. No, it's a different, different patient. Oh, yeah. It's it's another, this one came in this, yeah, this no, weekend. Oh, that one came in Friday. Yeah, okay. yeah so we don't it's have anything. One. And oh so, you know, very high risk to the Just patient for that. death, especially with bronchiolitis obliterans. Yeah. Acute tubular necrosis. So, um, um, he came in actually at, with a question of Stevens Johnson TEN. Doesn't look like that, and cyclosporin certainly would not be an option. Mm -hmm. Appears to have gram negative sepsis as well as oh. acute kidney failure. Um, so, corticosteroid, rituximab. IVIG are things that w may be safe in that setting and potentially life-saving for the patient. But um, good to know um, all of the, you know, can't share any HIPAA information, but like grand rounds we can discuss on de-identified patient characteristics to work through a tough scenario. Okay.
So what do you see? Scar-like area. Scar, exactly. So you got scar, and you can make out the myofibroblasts that are very wavy with the equally wavy <coughs> collagen kind of corkscrew pattern, horizontally oriented, vessels vertically oriented in a chronic scar. And then in this particular patient, when you look at the cells, you can make out that a lot of the erythrocytes, instead of being round, are kind of in the shape of a scythe <laughs> or sickle. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is chronic ulcer in a sickler. <laughs> so you have scar and you can make out the sickle cells in the, <laughs> the sickle erythrocytes in the, in the blood channels. obviously done as an alopecia biopsy, right? Mm -hmm. So you have your horizontal and you have your vertical. Let's focus on the vertical. Mm -hmm. um, got kind of like vertical streaking of the <coughs> lymphocytes. So what's your diagnosis? Um, lupus. lupus, and you are correct. So you have hyperkeratosis, you have interface dermatitis, you have vertically oriented column of lymphs in the mid dermis, which is probably the easiest way to get to lupus. And then you have patchy perivascular lymphoid infiltrate. Um, you have naked hair fiber telling you it's a scarring alopecia. But this vertical column of lymphs in mid dermis is pretty good for lupus. How happy is your epidermis? Um, it's not too happy. It looks like the yeah. is pretty acute. Moderate, it's mm -hmm. so it looks kind of acute and it looks moderately unhappy, but not really TEN unhappy, right. right? And they took a specimen that went down pretty far, and what do you see down pretty far? Yeah, exactly. So every last little capillary looks <coughs> calcified, and then you have thrombi in the vessels. Those are the two features you have in calciphylaxis. So the way you can address calciphylaxis is to dissolve that calcium with something like thiosulfate, or use tissue plasminogen activator to dissolve those clots, mm -hmm. which are causing the infarction, which is what's causing the still just moderate unhappiness above that's going to become much more unhappy, right? Because this biopsy was probably taken towards the edge of the necrotic, of the rock hard retiform necrosis. Yeah, so definitely sponge to the point of vesiculation, mm -hmm. right? So if you had to put it in a broad category, where would you put it? Um, I'm trying to look for any EOs for a happy differential. Um, I don't really see any. Yep, don't see EOs, but mm -hmm. so just a spongiotic dermatitis differential, and then given the ropey collagen in the papillary dermis, is this more like an acute or a chronic spongiotic dermatitis? So more chronic spongiotic dermis because of that ropey yeah. collagen. And this is something on the face and V of the neck and forearms. So yeah. kind of, I'm trying to lead you to a photo distribution yeah. for it. Right. And this was, PMLA. it was, um, right. so PMLE, papillal vesicular PMLE is spongiotic. Um, Plaque-like PMLE is the one with the, um, the coat sleeve infiltrates around vessels. 
Um, this one was a um, photo contact, mm -hmm. which okay. tends to be towards things that absorb light, mm -hmm. like sunscreens mm -hmm. especially, which account for the majority of photo contact. Something that probably doesn't belong in the skin. Uh, it's clear cells. Clear cells, lots of blood. So clear cell RCC. Yeah, so, so renal would probably be your first stop. Kind of elongated nests or tubules, clear cell, very bloody. Renal cell carcinoma. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what did you say? Cylindroma. Cylindroma, very good. So you have basaloid proliferation in that they are nuclei with no red cytoplasm, but the nuclei are distinctly darker to the outside, paler <laughs> gray to the inside, surrounded by a thick basement membrane zone that's red, and they fit together like jigsaw puzzles, so that cylindroma, when they are more inflamed with lymphocytes and forming big balls, that's a spiratinoma, the two often go together and are closely related. It's another football, the dermis. Okay. Um, it doesn't really have red ducts. It does have the, those red blood cells. Now the red blood cells um, in apparent vessels, or are they just in there between the spindle just cells? In there between the spindle cells. What are you thinking? Or something like that. And you get credit for Jeopardy <laughs> for phrasing it in the form of a question, so very good. So spindle cells with erythrocytes between them, not in apparent vessel, goes with nodular KS. Early patch KS is staghorn lymphatic looking vessels, often with plasma cells. Patch KS is busy, busy around every pre-existing structure in the dermis with new vessel formation and um, tumor nodular KS, spindle cells with erythrocytes between them. Very good. Epidermolytic acanthoma, very good. Just keep that easy button parked <laughs> there. <laughs> um, so sort of KA-like crateriform often, but with EHK, epidermolytic mm -hmm. hyperkeratosis is the major change, compact keratin layer, and the vast majority of these are um, in the genital re region with the majority being in the scrotum of older males who only want to know that it's not condyloma so mm -hmm. that they can tell at home, they can say that it is not condyloma <laughs> and then it's no longer an issue for them. The whole paracaratosis. Yep. And a real spine, right? Yeah, and on uh, what part of the body do you think? Maybe a Maybe volar? Yeah, volar so not a real AK site, mm. but what would be associated with a duct and then above it have an almost poor keratosis like column of parakeratosis and give you a spine like keratoderma? what's called music box spine keratoderma, which is also 
Chorokeratotic, Acrinosia duct nevus. Um, looks like um, like, a music box. like music box spines <laughs> all over your palm. Is there a certain name for that kind of like keratinization that like dense? Like the, you know, besides, it's not cornoid lamella. I mean, it's kind of cornoid lamella-like. Um, it's just compact just hyperkeratosis. I, I mean, there may be some other name, but not that I know. Okay, we want we need a poetic description of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sea of snot. So <laughs> that's as poetic as it gets. <laughs> Pure poetry. Blue islands floating in a sea of snot. <laughs> mucinous <laughs> carcinoma, and that can be primary or it can be metastatic. The metastatic ones can be from breast, in which case they stain very much like the ones from skin because they're both of modified apocrine type differentiation. And then the gut ones, especially distal gut, um, tend to be um, CK20, CDX2 positive, so they stain like gut carcinoma, which can help differentiate those. Dermal spits. Well done. Hit that easy button there. That was easy. So you have linear theeks or fascicles of cells with very prominent, they're large epithelioid, they have prominent nucleoli. There is no overlying ach acanthosis, hyperkeratosis, pseudoepitheliumous hyperplasia. Um, because it's almost purely dermal, right? And you don't tend to get that in a dermal spitz. So dermal spitz looks spindle and epithelioid, <coughs> just like the dermal component of any other spitz, but it lacks the, <coughs> excuse me, lacks the overlying pseudoepithelium and hyperplasia. <coughs> Everything looks fairly normal until you get into some necrosis, and then this structure here. Which has a concentric ring of this kind of tissue pushed apart by inflammatory cells. So the original structure was probably round with this wreath of smooth muscle that's now pushed apart with <coughs> acute and chronic inflammation. So, yeah, I think I heard polyarteritis, nodosa, PAN is most likely. So concentric ring, like a wreath of smooth muscle inflammatory cells pushing apart those layers of smooth muscle. So it's a, you know, an artery that's having a very bad day being attacked by acute and chronic inflammation, which usually goes with polyarteritis, no dose. Okay, so. We have no surface epidermis. We have deeper tissue. Fats, mucinous spindle-like substance. So could be a spindle cell lipoma, but I guess we'll figure it. So could be spindle cell lipoma. Do you see any ropey collagen? Hard to make a diagnosis of spindle yeah. cell lipoma in the absence of ropey collagen, right? Yeah, they're like single file. Of fat. I mean, it's like there are definitely of single file rows of lipocytes, so you characteristically <laughs> that goes with what? DFSP. So this could be mixoid DFSP. What else can look just like mixoid DFSP? But stains S100 positive. 
DP, I guess, the, what we had earlier. Yep. Yeah. Diffuse neurofibroma, mm. right? So your differential is diffuse neurofibroma versus myxoid DFSP. The Meisner-like corpuscles favor neural, right? And this indeed stained neural and was from a known von Recklinghausen's patient. <coughs> Yeah, they look like giant cells. So these, so these are all granulomas. Okay. Right? So the first stop is these are granulomas. Mm -hmm. Are they naked or are they, do they have a heavy lymphoid infiltrate or are they partially clothed? Partially <laughs> these are kind of partially <laughs> clothed, right? They're undecided. Right. So um, give me a differential for naked granulomas. Uh, like sarcoid, cutaneous chrome. And this was cutaneous Crohn's. So this is from the vulva of a little girl, and this is cutaneous Crohn's, right? So unilateral vulvar swelling, little girl or teenager is usually Crohn's, right? It's usually IBD. Um, so cutaneous Crohn's, sarcoid, what else? Uh, can some of like your TB or kind of like the um, More like zirconium beryllium, okay. um, tattoo granuloma, TB tends to be on the dressed side where there's a significant mm -hmm. lymphoid infiltrate around it. Um, so the infectious things tend to have more of a lymphoid infiltrate, mm -hmm. whereas the non-infectious granulomas tend to be more in the naked arena. So part of the corneum is a little compact. Do you see any other pathology here? Not really. So where do you want to look? In the corneum. In the corneum. Well done. So let's look in the corneum since that looked a little funky, right? So we're going to look in the corneum and see. <laughs> And you can kind of make out in that compact corneum, can you make out sort of vertically oriented gray amphiphilic stuff there that's not hollow like fungus? Right. So is it like bacteria? Yeah. So what would be vertically oriented bacteria? Like a carini. Like carini bacteria, like what? What helpful instrument in clinic do you want to pull out to make this diagnosis? The Woods Lamp, because this is erythrasma. Well done, you need an easy button yes. over there. <laughs> that was easy. So is this acute or chronic process? Pretty chronic. You have papilledromal fibrosis. You have a lot of acanthosis, hyperkeratosis. So this has been going on a while. So what's been going on a while? I think I can appreciate some nodular angioplasia. There's nodular angioplasia. What else is there? <laughs> There's scabies. <laughs> right. So first off, anytime there are holes in the corneum. If someone hands you a box, what's your question? What's in the box? Someone hands you a hole in the stratum corneum, what's your question? Yeah, exactly. So holes in the stratum corneum aren't normal, so it's a tunnel. And then you see mama right there. Right. So this is obviously a very chronic, itchy scabies. Not diagnosed until this biopsy. How are we doing time wise? Yeah. About 15. You got bone. And then 
why was why did this building come out? Oh, that um, gout. That's gout. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so that is a gouty tophus in you know probably part of a toe that came out. <laughs> 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 So you have these very round blue cells, and then they turn into that. Oh, more like a polymetricoma. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. this is a great pilometricoma, right? Because it's almost all basal cells, and you got that little bit of ghost cell, and there's no question what it is. Um, but that's that's one that would. <coughs> yeah, not tricky though. Right? Straightforward <laughs> <laughs> Straight <laughs> diagnostic. Thank you very much. <laughs> Straightforward diagnostic. It's <laughs> a big punch. It's kind of almost layered and square. Like almost cake. like layered and squared like. A cake. Like a cake. <laughs> or L LDS. Or L sorry. NLD. NLD. <laughs> you yes, knew it. But I yes. met. <laughs> <laughs> Something on the way to three letters, <laughs> right? Okay, so NLD, square punch, layered granuloma with devitalized collagen. Very good. Well done from Stan. <laughs> Stan. <laughs> shave biopsy, and what did they shave Gra the top of? A GCT. And so you look for the giant lysosomal granules, which are present, yeah, telling you it's probably going to stay S100 positive as a neural GCT. <laughs> so Shirley is getting towards the end of her fellowship, which is why she knows all. <laughs> um, for anyone who has missed any slide, you will have to complete your training. <laughs> <laughs> this may come as a shock. Kind of nevoid cells in nests. Yeah, a little. And the nests aren't totally uniform, but it's in a small papule. I don't see a lot of work. How old do you think the patient is, judging by the collagen? Young. Young. <coughs> so this young proliferation that ends in a nest, matures, disperses, has vertically oriented nests of large spindle cells, spits, <coughs> and that, you know, anytime you see a spits, your first question is, is this young skin? Is this old skin? Right? Because you can often tell just by looking at the surrounding skin. Yeah. Do you see any atypia? <laughs> so lots of 20 pound nuclei and spindle cells. So give me a differential. Um, it's going to slam up against our skin. Yeah. And this stains with nothing but CD10. So it's probably AFX. A solar lentigo, or if it forms horn cyst, reticulated seb. Or if it goes down all the follicles, down in Dagos. Mm -hmm. But in this case, look, what we have just looks like solar lentigo. It may be anastomosis enough that you might want to think of reticulated set, but <laughs> benign in either case. <coughs> Bless you. Bless 
spindle cells, erythrocytes in no apparent vessel. So I'm hearing it from several capuchies. Properly pronounced Kopshi, although his name was Morris Cohn. <laughs> he just came from the town of Kopshi where the Kopshi River was. <laughs> Why, yes. So, subepidermal bulla filled with EOs, and so your diagnosis, or blood, BP, Leonard IGA, EPA, bolus, lupus, um, DH. So all of those are good. Also remember bull scabies. <laughs> Can look just like BP. Who gets BP? Old, old people old in nursing people. homes. Who gets bull scabies? <laughs> old people <laughs> in nursing homes. So keep that in your differential. Um, this particular one was EBA. Remember um, 10 to 20 percent of what looks like classic BP doesn't tend to respond well to treatment. Those tend to be the EBAs, and they're the ones that more likely have other systemic associations, including malignancy. Perivascular, periatnexal, some lymphs in the eccrine coil, yeah. superficial yeah. and deep, lupus. lupus, and why is there so much space between the collagen bundles? There's mucin in there, so you are correct. Lupus. You are the Is queen of lupus this <laughs> morning, so you get to hit the easy button. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. That was easy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like there's like a little bit of fibrosis in the pathway dermis. Um, I'd say more normal if we went higher. Because it's not really ropey, okay. right? So it may just be site where it looks a little, you know, more uniform. But what are so these brown things? A lot of pigments horizontally. Horizontally oriented dendritic melanocytes with no alteration in the collagen, and it's in the upper third of the dermis. So Nevis of Ota or Ito, and this particular one was Ito's Nevis. Okay, tell me about your epidermis. Uh, that's pretty unhappy. Fully unhappy or partially unhappy? Partially unhappy. Partially unhappy. Now let's look down. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going on down below? So lots of thrombosis, yeah. right? So give me a differential. Um, I guess it's a pretty large vessel, so you don't really think of calciphylaxis. Which uh, is actually what this turned out okay. to be, but um, with larger vessel thrombosis, what other things are thrombotic disorders that could lead to the same kind of necrosis? Uh, like I guess antiphospholipid or protein C-S. Yeah, protein C, protein S, yeah. factor V Leiden, mm -hmm. antithrombin, mm -hmm. three... Uh, prothrombin mutation, your whole coagulopathy mm -hmm. disorder. If it were sepsis, you would tend to have neutrophilic debris. They'd be dirtier mm -hmm. with more inflammation in the vessel. Five minutes. Pigment incontinence. <coughs> the Pigment incontinence suggesting. Uh, interface process. Yeah, probably an old <coughs> interface process. In fact, do you have a basal layer or is everything squamatized it's here? Squamatized. And your follicle itself? It's plugged. And a little glassy. Glasses. What kind of things can so do that? Could be a, uh, could be a regressed KA or lupus, hypertrophic lupus. So, and which one of those is more likely to give you a burnt out interface dermatitis? Lupus. So hypertrophic lupus is high on your differential. Um, the collagen is also very sclerotic here, though, right? So I agree that follicle, you know, that glassy follicle really makes you think hypertrophic lupus. Like a sclerosis kind of burnt out? 
Morphia um, overlap. Morphia overlap, all of those things are good. This is a patient post bone marrow transplant. Mm. Sclerodermoid GVH, where you have both mm. the sclerodermoid and the late interface of GVH. Everything's fine and dandy until you come to that. What kind of vessel is that? It's a larger vessel. With that artery. concentric, continuous yeah, wreath so of muscle? PAN. Polyarteritis nodosa. Mm -hmm. That's an artery and that's PAN. Very good. There. And those granulomas are non-naked. Non-naked, and anything else about them? They're kind of stellate, almost. Yeah, like Giant. palisaded. Right. So palisaded around what kind of stuff? Necrotic in the product stuff, like NXG, perhaps. Or is that collagen? That's a lot of elastic Elastics. being engulfed. Mm -hmm. Is that like elastophagocytosis? So it is elastophagocytosis. Granuloma. So, so, O'Brien. So could be an O'Brien granuloma annular elastolytic, um, which many people regard as just GA on sure. sun damaged skin, sure. but it's certainly a type of GA on sun damaged skin that eats up elastic tissue. Um, The epidermis, not unhappy, is unhappy. I see First. some mucinous cells so. for confluent and acidic proliferation yep. in the so conjunct. So you call that. Tyro. You are correct. So this MIS. is MIS affecting both skin and conjunctiva mm -hmm. of lid. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yeah. nodule, you have extravasated erythrocytes, what look sort of like osteoclasts, like giant cells, lots of microvesiculation, lots and lots of microvesiculation in the stroma, and some pyramid-shaped with dendrites, fibroblasts, similar to what would be seen in tissue culture. So is that a description of fibromatosis or of nod fasci? Nodular fasciitis. Very good. And that's the long last. Okay. Accessory digit, a nidget. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the nerve, bungle, and acral skin features. Very good. So for anyone who missed a slide, you <laughs> will be finishing your training, <laughs> <laughs> which is as it should be. Okay, well done. Surely we have your certificate waiting in the <laughs> <laughs>